Hello everybody, Dokkan Assets here. Today we are back with another animation analysis video. And ladies and gentlemen, we are taking a look at the other unit that is releasing for the New Year's Wrath of the Dragon celebration. Of course, that being the brand new Dokkan Fest in Hyrudagon. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I was not very happy about Super Saiyan 3 Goku's animation, so uh, go check out that video. Uh, it will be probably at the end of this one in the cards. Uh, warning, I'm angry boy in that video. <laughs> very frustrated boy in that video. However, Harutagon is here to save me. Because I gotta be honest with you, I've watched these animations a couple times and I quite like them. I didn't actually expect to like these as much as I did, but... I was also kind of having a weird gut feeling that these would end up being pretty good when uh, I was, you know, just kind of like thinking about these animations before they ended up coming out. And, lo and behold, I am actually a pretty, pretty much a fan of this guy's animation. So, if you don't want to see Angry Boy, <laughs> you could see Happy Boy in this video. So let's go ahead and get into it. Obviously, as per usual, we always watch these one time through, and then we will go ahead and dissect them. As I always like to say as well, I'm by no means an animation professional, I just do these videos for fun, but obviously I look at Dokkan animation, excuse me, all the time, and the funny PNGs that make them up. And with that being said, I think I have a pretty good idea of what makes a good Dokkan animation. Now with that being said, I think that these animations are actually really cool and uh, honestly pretty solid, right? Like these are the type of animations that it's nothing too insane, right? Like it's nothing that makes me go, holy cow, this is the coolest animation that I have ever seen. But these are just some very solid animations overall, if I do say so myself. Um, I think they did a very, very good job with these and really making you kind of feel like you're taking on the onslaught of Hyrudagon, or I guess using the onslaught of uh, Hyrudagon in this case. Now, Hyrudagon does basically have four animations here, right? Um, he's got the intro animation, he has the super attack, he has the active skill transfer Transformation, and then he has the super attack for the transformed version of himself as well Just interesting to note with this card art um, I was kind of thinking about hey, where did this come from? And it's actually from this shot right here um, when Goku gets blasted to the ground here um, Kind of an interesting spot to take the card art from um, but it is pretty cool and uh, with Hyrudagon, um, it is really interesting actually because um, obviously this is just when he's using like the heat breath, right? But what's interesting is that this is one of the few cards where the transformation art is actually not the same as what is in the background, right? You can see, excuse me, um, that the background art is actually different for the transformed Hyrudagon, which is really interesting. Um, I'm assuming it's probably because of the angle that this art is at. They maybe couldn't have made it work here, but... They would have had to like maybe turn it the other way and then they could have done it which is weird because that's how he is in the movie here i don't know kind of weird but still pretty cool and obviously it's just nice because it just brings more art to the game in general so that is pretty dope all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the big man's intro animation big man literally in this case um ironically enough not on giant form but that is when a character transforms into a giant. Harudugan is just always giant. Um, so this is really well done. This particular scene of Hyrudagon coming out of the portal. Again, I did just watch this movie recently, so it's pretty fresh in my mind. This looks really good, honestly, with the electricity um, and the portal forming up there with the bolts kind of shooting out. Obviously, this looks a little bit strange, but of course, this is how it would look in real life if lightning came out of a circle in the sky. <laughs> so, pretty good job, honestly, with this. I like how the lightning kind of begins to cover the landscape, right, and sort of sparks everywhere. Very cool effect that they have there with it dancing everywhere right on the screen. And, obviously, to follow suit, right, they have the lightning strike the bottom half of Hyrudagon, which I really like that they actually have Hyrudagon kind of react to getting hit, right? You can see a little bit of recoil on his legs there, right, as he's sort of adjusting to it, which is really cool. And I like that they sort of have a base form there of the light, um, which is really, really cool before it obviously explodes. And the light covering the screen. This is such a cool shot here of Hyrudagon's face super close up. And 
right? Obviously, the light kind of coming off of it in that way is such a nice little effect. They did such a good job with it. And then they cut to this shot right here. I do kind of wish that this cut wasn't as hard here because obviously it's like the super nice shot of the close-up and then bam. But it's not terrible. And also, this could be something that was definitely in the movie. So when it comes to stuff like that, you know, I'm not going to knock come for it as much. Also, I apologize. It is very late at night and I've gotten like no sleep this week. <laughs> anyway... We have Hyrudigon moving back a little bit, giving a shout to the sky, right? Um, I will say, this section right here is the only thing that looks a little weird. The way that Hyrudigon twists his body here, I felt like looked a little bit off, right? And I was like, hmm, is this just like an optical illusion? I think it's just because they have his like torso, his top half, right? It just kind of goes right it's a little weird that it just sort of twists with a couple of frames and even in full motion i noticed this and i also thought it looked kind of weird like it definitely looks better when it's not in slow-mo like that but it's still a little bit jarring to be honest with you it's like definitely noticeable that he just kind of like goes <coughs> but to be fair maybe it kind of plays into the monster aspect of hyrudicon <laughs> but you know he's supposed to be like this very creepy non-humanoid type of thing i don't know nonetheless though when it comes to then his super attack animation, right, we have this right here where Hyrudagon is stanced up in front of Goku. They cut to Hyrudagon standing right in front of Goku here before giving a slash downward, which is a very rapid hit. And I like the follow up at the end. I think that that is a really cool way to do it. I like that little end bit there, right? Super nice. And the transition here is so cool. So they zoom in on his face, right? And then they go here, right? To the really close zoom in to transitioning the asset right here, right? Which you can barely notice when you're watching this in full motion. And it transitions to this completely different asset, which then transforms into Hyrudigon. A really cool way to do a transition. I quite like this a lot. And then of course you have the purple smog. This kind of looks like muck um covering Hyrudagon before he fades away into the smoke that obviously he's made of which is really really cool and i like the way that the smoke looks they did a very very good job i think um on kind of really making it look like the heat forms out of the smoke for sure um it's interesting how they do this right because obviously they have a full asset where he's in the smoke where it really really looks like Hyrudagon. and then as the shot progresses, they basically just fade the smoke away and they have Hyrudagon come in. But they do something cool here where they sort of like give him a purple hue or almost like a purple outline. Like the clouds are still covering him, which I think is a neat little touch to really kind of drive this animation home. And then, of course, we have Hyrudagon um, ready to uh, catch a football or something here. <laughs> but um, this pose change goes away pretty quick. He looks very funny here, I'm not going to lie. It's not that the asset looks bad. It's just that Hyrudagon looks silly because he's Hyrudagon <laughs> making this pose. But obviously, this is pretty cool with him winding up the punch, right? And then, of course, having it come towards the screen. I quite like that little bit of perspective. And some nice follow-through, right? Obviously, um, on having the fist come down from the sky and having him come all the way down to then having the enemy bounce against the ground with a little dust and bam, slamming them against the ground, kinda. Um, again, this is kind of just, in my opinion, really, I guess, a kind of disadvantage of the stinky sprite. Because... This is more like Hyrudagon punches him on the way down and then he lands on his own and the enemy lands far away, right? Which I think is fine, but it definitely would have been cool to see Hyrudagon basically just like crush the enemy for sure. But this is then where the card art appears, which is kind of crazy. The card art appears that late in the animation. And then we have this section right here where Hyrudagon shouts, and I like this little effect that they have to kind of represent, you know, how loud he's yelling, to then him slamming his tail on the ground. Now, this is the one part of this animation, excuse me, oh my gosh, that I don't really like, I'll be honest. Him slamming his tail on the ground looks cool. The little jump looks great. The beginning part with his head all zoomed in, the transition even of the white fade looks great. It is the tail being dug into the ground that bothers me a little bit. It's the way that it moves, right? Once it finally cracks into the ground, you have this very weird movement where 
it doesn't really look like his tail is extending outward to compensate for the distance that it is moving forward like this um right it doesn't really look like his tail is extending or like he's leaning it forward because he's running out of room or something like that it definitely just looks like they took this png of uh, this part of hyrudagon's tail right and basically just you know just kind of had it shift towards the screen i suppose right i don't really know how to describe it i was trying to think of a better way like a better analogy to make but they basically just have this particular png of you know the end of his tail basically just slide towards the screen so i don't know i do think is a little bit off-putting again it's just weird that Hyrudagon doesn't kind of compensate for you know how long he's extending his tail um just is a little bit off but again it's not like the worst thing and we then have this follow-up shot here which is actually pretty cool um Hyrudagon already uh having lifted up his tail out of the ground and i will say they do make it look extremely long in this shot so i suppose at least that's a good thing where you know here it definitely looks like that he was kind of really extending his reach to be able to you know kind of reach out that far i was like look how far the crack in the ground is compared to how far his tail would reach if he just stabbed out he would have to like lean forward or take a couple steps or something like that but i do like this little bit at the end where in this crack you just kind of have the dust cloud like shoot off i do think that is a neat little effect and a nice way to kind of just emphasize the animation and give it a little bit more follow through so we now have the transformation animation um which is pretty cool here right you obviously have the cocoon form of the hyrudagon of the hyrudagon of hyrudagon and this is so well animated with the back cracking right the green light kind of showing out of the shell right having it kind of expand and break apart a little bit with the beautiful butterfly coming out and he does look like this um, when he first comes out where he's kind of a little bit green right and i'm sure that that's partially because of the green light and just like the transformation taking place but it's really cool the way that they animate it um it looks really good and i think this cut is in a good spot and they then have the color fade in right where you then have hyrudagon's more iconic colors where you remember that he looks like this um right in the movie they have his wings grow a little bit too which is cool to see if they actually bothered to include that it's very quick at the end there but you can see his wings actually do grow out a little bit and then you have hyrudagon shout to the heavens which i really like this shot i will say his head looks a little bit long but to be fair he is a grotesque giant bug monster so it's definitely not the worst thing the red glowing eyes are a nice little touch and i feel like this shot does a really good job of kind of emphasizing like hey look how big this guy is he's towering over an entire city with just his presence alone very very intimidating and very well done i like it quite a bit but yeah the smoke in the background too is cool um again definitely a very very good shot i think his transformation is well done it's very simple but it's well executed and it looks nice so then we have the super attack animation where we have hyrudagon charge forward here first of all i do like in the beginning you have this little bit of um leg movement right or i guess hand movement more like it oh um, i guess the leg movement too right his legs kind of go out straight a little bit from being in the knee position right and his um almost called him antenna his wings do kind of move accordingly here um to sort of compensate for the fact of how he's going to move so that is really cool too they have him then fly towards the camera which is a nice little shot cutting from that to behind the enemy and a very very nice punch it is kind of funny because it sort of looks like the harudagon is winding up for uh, a kick here um right like that but then it ends up being a punch but it still looks good and all of these hits actually look really really good and i think the follow-through on them is it really makes them feel so impactful all of these different punches um and slaps i guess in the case of the last one really feel like they have a lot of impact from the motion blur to the again the follow through is what's really really nice and like for this one even though there is no follow through you see him hitting the um you know the wall of the building so hard and not to mention you saw his fist so big just moments ago um they definitely do a very good job with the perspective and really making you feel like that these hits are very very impactful they do a very good job of that so then the card art appears on the screen with hyridagon blowing the flames 
And we then have this shot right here with him blowing the fire again. Looks good. Nothing too crazy to complain about me. It is a very simply shot. Um, but, right, the flames covering the enemy there and then, of course, covering the landscape. And that is pretty cool. It's unfortunate that he is so big that you don't get to see a ton of it. But it still looks really good. Um, and I like that that little ending is basically like the iconic fire attack because he already did so much in the animation. And I didn't even notice the lighting effects on Harutagon. Um, are actually really, really good. They definitely executed that well for how simple the lighting was here and the fire and everything. So that is the boy Hyrudagon's animations. Again, I definitely had a lot less to say about this guy than I did Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Obviously, Super Saiyan 3 Goku is a unit that I'm a lot more passionate about, so that quite makes sense to me. But I think overall, these animations are pretty good. Of course, there's always a couple of things that I nitpick when it comes to these, where there's certain things I'm like, oh, well, you could do that or you could do this. But when it comes to the composition overall of these essays, I think they're really well done. They really capture the spirit of Hyrudagon well. They really capture the kind of scary terror aspect of him. They get the fact that he is huge down really, really well. They have his punches being super impactful. They even include the funny ghosting effect, right? I think they did a very good job overall representing the character. And I would say for the most part, again, besides those minor nitpicks, his animations are very fluid, very consistently throughout. Very good, honestly. Again, it's nothing that's going to make me go, oh my gosh, this is the next greatest unit in Dokkan in terms of animations. But it's definitely a unit that I would put pretty high up there with not only just being consistent, but having very good animations overall. So shout out to you, Hyrudagon. I did not expect to be gassing up Hyrudagon tonight and be absolutely dunking on Super Saiyan 3 Goku. I'm very sad about that, to be honest with you. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. Nonetheless, let me know what you thought about the boy Hyrudagon in the comments section below. And with all that being said, I will catch you in the next one. Dokkan Assets out. Peace.